Let us begin by chanting the invocation together. Vagartha viva sampraktau Vagartha pratipattaye Jagatav pitarau vande Parvati parameshwarau Mathematics, sciences, history or art, whichever be the field of study, the beauty of this civilization has been to weave even the most burdensome of knowledge into beautiful stories in the form of poetry and song. There are many such stories which convey the origin of the Sanskrit alphabet. We will look at three such stories today. The first and the most common is that of Lord Shiva's Damaru. Maharshi Panini, one of the ancient sages who compiled Sanskrit grammar, narrates that once upon a time the Sapta Rishis, the first disciples of Lord Shiva, visited him at his abode, Mount Kailasa. Out of his desire to enlighten them, he offered them a magnificent view of his cosmic dance and at the end of it struck his Damaru 14 times. This series of 14 sounds called as Maheshwara Sutras form the very basis of Sanskrit alphabet according to Panini's arrangement of grammar. The second story is that of Sati Devi and her father Daksha Prajapati. Once upon a time, Daksha Prajapati, who was Lord Shiva's father-in-law, wanted to conduct a grand yajna. Sati Devi, Lord Shiva's wife and Daksha's daughter, attended the event despite being intentionally uninvited. During the event, when Daksha spoke ill of Lord Shiva and started insulting him, Sati Devi felt utterly humiliated and jumped into the fire of the yajna, immolating herself. When this news reached Lord Shiva, he flew into a rage, destroyed Daksha's yajna in the form of Lord Virabhadra, and unable to come out of his immense sorrow at the loss of his wife, carried her body on his shoulders and started to aimlessly wander, ignoring everything else. Upon the request of the Devas to rid him of his grief, and bring him back to his senses, Lord Vishnu used his Sudarshana Chakra and scattered the mortal remains of Sati Devi, which then fell at 50 different places across Bharat. Each of these 50 locations, called as a Shakti Pitha, is ascribed with each letter of the Sanskrit alphabet, and the deities there correspond to the Siddhis that each of these sounds can bestow. The next description of the origin of the Sanskrit alphabet is less of a story and more an analytical description of how the human body is arranged at an energy level. The seven primordial chakras of the human body, which are the junctions of where life energy gathers and branches out, are symbolized as padmas or lotuses. Each of them is represented as having a unique number of petals, which signify how many pathways branch out from it. Muladhara chakra at the base has four such petals, Svadhisthana has 6, Manipuraka 10, Anahata 12, Vishuddhi 16 and Agnya Chakra has 2 such petals. The total number of these petals adds up to 50 with the nature of these petals corresponding to the sound of the Sanskrit alphabet. Aksharamala Japam is a process in Tantra where these sounds are chanted in a specific sequence to activate the 7th and the final chakra called as Sahasrara, which leads to ultimate realization. All of these stories have hidden within them a profound possibility. All of these paths offer a doorway towards the same goal. These are different techniques one can adapt based on one's own individual preferences. Among these many methods of approach, we shall choose the Maheshwara Sutras, which also form the basis for the rules of Sanskrit grammar, for our purpose of mastering the sounds of Sanskrit. As we go through the lessons which demand your focus and attention over the next couple of weeks, please remind yourself of this profound possibility that exists as an undercurrent, even in an exercise as simple as practicing the alphabet. See you in the next lesson. Namaskaram. This was the second lesson of our Sanskrit foundation course called as Vakshuddhihi. The next lesson and all subsequent lessons assignments and live streams can only be accessed through Google Classroom. You can register for the course using this link. This course is made available for free and accessible to everybody with the help of our dedicated group of patrons. 
If you wish to help us create more such content, consider becoming a sponsor on Patreon or make a one-time contribution through these options. Share this video among all those in your circle who might be interested in learning Sanskrit. See you in the next video. Namaskaram.